What is covered in this, uh, this report from Channel 5 is an interim plan. The final rules will be set in September. I think there's public comment they're waiting on, but they never listened to it, but they're going to let the public comment so they can ignore it and then say they looked into it and they really considered it strongly and then didn't make any changes. Okay, so I'm going to play the report for you. It's 2 minutes and 28 seconds, and then I'll come uh, back and talk about some things about it, okay? The police shooting of 13-year-old Adam Toledo is sparking major changes in the way Chicago police officers conduct foot pursuits. We've spent the night looking at this new policy and gathering reaction to it. NBC5's Natalie Martinez on the story live tonight with an update. Natalie? Stephen, the police superintendent says this new policy looks out for police, for the people they're chasing, and of course for the public. But some we spoke to this evening says what's written on paper might not be implemented. Adam Toledo would have turned 14 tonight. The 13-year-old was chased down in this little village alley in late March, shot and killed by a Chicago police officer. Two days later, 22-year-old Anthony Alvarez chased and killed by police after an incident at a Portage Park gas station. Now, a new foot pursuit policy requires officers to balance need for apprehension with concerns about safety. Let's let things slow down. Let's use de-escalation. Let's set up a perimeter if we need be. Let's choose, a, let's choose the right place to capture him and then the right time to capture him uh, or her. Little Village activists we spoke to are apprehensive tonight. It's the same thing as the old one. There's no real changes. The Toledo family attorney writes, a meaningful foot pursuit policy is long overdue, and today's announcement is a step in the right direction. But without implementation, officer training, and compliance, the policy is written in lemon juice. A piece of writing is not really focuses focusing on my skin color. The policy says foot pursuits can only be initiated when there is probable cause for an arrest or when a crime is about to be committed. Body cameras must be activated. Chases are prohibited for minor traffic violations and can be terminated at any time by supervisors. And it outlines alternatives for officers to consider. Ariwa Karen Winters, great nephew Pierre Lurie, was shot and killed by police April 2016 in North Lawndale and believes the policy only came from pressure by the community. I'm hoping the large the community really goes on on the portal during the public comment period and and make comments. I hope this policy saves someone's life. The new policy goes into effect June 11th, but isn't finalized until after a public meeting sometime in December. Meanwhile, the ACLU of Illinois says in a statement in part, today's sudden announcement fails because the policy was developed without incorporating the ideas of black and brown Chicagoans. We're live at Chicago Police Headquarters. Natalie Martinez, NBC5 News. All right, Natalie, thank you. Gathering that reaction. Okay, so let's go over some things here got to understand what's going on here this change is ridiculously ridiculously bad but i would expect nothing else from Lori lightfoot at this point i certainly wouldn't expect anything else from our handpicked superintendent david brown um he is a full reformer if there ever has been one what a joke okay defining foot pursuits as appropriate only when there is probable cause for an arrest or is believed the individual is committed has committed or is committing has committed, is committing, or is about to commit a crime. Hmm. Any crime? When what's new? And second of all, does that mean for the last 120 years, the Chicago Police Department had no regulation on who they could have a foot pursuit on? That's what that means, right? And it hasn't really changed. Why would a Chicago police officer chase someone who hasn't committed is committing or is about to commit a crime. Why would a Chicago police officer get in a foot pursuit with someone that wasn't that didn't fit that definition? It's mind-boggling. Why the hell didn't they push back on the stories? Next, prohibiting foot pursuits for criminal offenses less than a class A misdemeanor unless the person poses an obvious threat to community or any person. Okay. You look at the Anthony Alvarez, they had him for driving without or driving on a suspended license. Is that above a class A misdemeanor? I thought if you're going to see real foot pursuit reform, we were going to get only foot pursuits for violent crimes, armed robbery, murder, shootings, rape, aggravated batteries. I don't understand. That, this to me, is completely meaningless. It's unbelievable. All right, next, prohibiting foot pursuits stemming from minor traffic violations. That's good. 
Kudos, David Brown, you got one thing right. Outlining alternatives to foot pursuits that should always be considered by officers, including establishing a surveillance or containment area and or apprehending an identified suspect at another time or place. Can someone explain to me what the hell that means? And I mean, what the hell does that mean? These things kick off in a second. You want the officer to stop and think, well, let's see, could we cordon him off? By the time they run that through in their head, the person's gone. That is BS. That was put in there to make people who read it think like, oh, they're really going to consider these things. BS. Ensuring circumstances surrounding a foot pursuit are considered before any foot pursuit takes place. Officers must ask themselves if they need to apprehend the sus subject. The need to apprehend the subject is worth the risk to responding, as op responding officers, the public, or the subject. Really? Once again, they're not going to stop and ask themselves that. Almost never. Almost never. Outline responsibilities for supervisors, which will allow them to instruct officers to discontinue a foot pursuit at any time. That's good if they're listening to the radio and the cops report it on the radio. And it's long enough for the officer, the supervisor, to determine what's going on in order to change. Yeah, that's possible, maybe. But the officers have to listen. They disregard the, the, the um, order to stop car chases all the time just by saying they didn't hear anything. Requiring officers to notify OEMC... Officer Emergency Management and Communications of a pursuit, foot pursuit. They have to check in on their radios. Ensure, ensuring officers engage in foot pursuits activate body worn cameras. That's good. Those two are good. But I don't think there's I don't think there's penalties for not doing that. What if they don't do it? There's no penalties. You can't be disciplined. So I like those two last ones. But I'm not sure what good it does unless there's something behind it. They're not really going to think about whether or not foot pursuit. It should just be probably no, we're only going to get in foot pursuits with people that are, that commit or have committed, or we believe strongly that they have committed a violent act or will commit a violent act, right? Our robbery, rape, aggravated battery, like domestic violence, homicide, shootings. Things like that. Mayor Lightfoot really had no interest in changing it. That's how we ended up with this foot pursuit policy. This is for the most part, not entirely, but for the most part, part toothless and worthless. And almost nothing is going to change from it. But this is how David Brown, the faux reformer, because he's a fraud, this is how he operates. This is his history in Dallas. It's a smoke and mirrors game. This is what he does. So here's what we end up with. This would have not prevented the Adam Toledo um, shooting. I didn't think it would, but it certainly isn't going to. I'm less certain about whether it would have impacted the Anthony Alvarez one. I'm less sure about what the impact would be. Time will tell as they, um, we get a little more about the policy.